But how will these overnight queues impact our own markets? We have a research team joining in to do just that. What's the trade setup looking like? The stocks that are likely to be in the news and the action from the FNO space as well. Hey guys, a very good morning to all of you. Um, Ikta, let me come across to you first up. Yes, there are global queues, but we do have a lot of domestic queues as well today. Hi, morning. Well, yesterday we did see follow-on buying taking place for the market, so that was definitely positive. We had the markets which closed at three-week highs, and it seems as though the markets are focusing on the possibility of factors such as the Fed holding off in terms of further rate hikes. Overall, Indian equities seem to be aided by CLSA upgrading India to overweight, which took place yesterday. Record funds in terms of SIPs for the month of September, which came in at around 16,420 crores. And the intensity of FII selling reducing. So FII's, for example, net sold around 422 odd crores in yesterday's trading session. In terms of the global markets, the Brent crude prices have softened a little bit. We have US, which closed higher, Asia, which is largely higher, and the gift nifty, which is indicating a little bit of a flat start for us. In terms of queues, it's definitely going to be TCS and the disappointment that it reported. Infosys, HCL Tech, HDFC, AMC will be reporting numbers today. India CPI numbers are due today, this evening. It's estimated to come in at 5.5%. So there is a softening which is expected. And August CPI IIP is expected to see an uptick. But the big Q globally will definitely be the US CPI data, which we will react to tomorrow. Okay, all right. So mix of global and domestic queues that we'll be tracking. Thank you, Ikta, for bringing us up to speed with all those queues. Uh, but Surbhi is joining us now. Surbhi, you have a long list today, a lot of earnings, a lot of stocks in news. That's right. So earning season has officially begun. Uh, first one is TCS. It was a mixed quarter. Revenue was a miss, but margins was a beat. Uh, dollar revenue declines for the first time since Q1 FI21. The margins improved 110 basis points sequentially. The company also announced the buyback of 17,000 crores at 400 and, uh, 4,150 rupees per share. For Delta Corp, it was a flat quarter. Revenues and EBITDA was flat on a year-on-year -year basis, but PAT was up by two, nearly 2% two on a year-on-year -year basis. Patanjali came up with the Q2 business updates. Edible oil segment faced an ongoing pricing pressure, the company said, and there were excessive imports which led to elevated inventory levels, impacting both revenue and margins in Q2. Sula Vinyas came up with the Q2 business updates. The Q2 revenue was up 11% on a year-on-year -year basis, and elite and premium uh, brands were up 18% on a year-on-year -year basis. Aurobindo Pharma, the company has signed a letter of intent with an American company, and this is for contract manufacturing operations. CIPLA, the US FDA, issues an EIR with a voluntary action status for Invergen Pharma, the wholly owned subsidiary of CIPLA, which is in New York. And as Ekta, Ekta mentioned, we'll be uh, watching out for Infosys, HCL Tech, HDFC, MC, and Angel One as they'll be coming up with the Q2 results today. Okay, all right. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Surbi, for all uh, that list. But let's talk about all the cues from the FNO space. Mangalam is joining us now. Hey, Mangalam. Good morning. So yesterday was a very good day of trade in, uh, uh, you know, our markets itself. The Nifty not only closed above that 19,800 mark, which was closer to the higher end of yesterday's trading range, it also conquered the 20-day moving average of 19,760. This a day after it conquered the 50-day moving average. Importantly, it was led by the two heaviest weights on the index. We had strong contribution coming in from Reliance and HDFC Bank, and that despite the underperformance that we saw in the Nifty Bank itself, these two contributed. The cash market flows were positive as well. The DIS bought about 1,000-odd crores. The FI selling reduced to just around 400-odd crores. And not just that, with the market moving higher, a lot of short, short positions in index futures were covered by the FIIs. They bought about 1,120 crores in index futures and covered almost 10,000 short contracts, adding 2,000 long contracts as well. And as a result of which, their long exposure inched mildly higher from 26-27 odd percent to 29 percent. Mind you, sustained outperformance on the upside will lead to those 71 percent short positions uh, covering their positions as well. And as a result of which, we could perhaps cross that 20,000 mark and maybe look at fresh all-time highs on the Nifty as well in this series. Nifty weekly options expiry today. And ahead of that, we've seen a lot of writing at the 19,900 call, telling you that 19,950 would be the first uh, leg of congestion. But were we to cross that, then 20,000 opens up because there has been some punt buying out there as well. The one thing that is sure is strong, strong support at the lower levels. 19,800 put added almost a crore shares in open interest. In fact, between 19,700, 19,750 and 19,800, we've added two crore shares in open interest itself. 
Watch out for some bit of resistance on the Nifty Bank at higher levels. Uh, the 20-day moving average is 44,841 and the 50-day moving average at 44,673. So that is con some congestion we'll have to eye. And a couple of stocks we'll watch out for. Delta Corp post its numbers yesterday out of FNO band. And MCX as well goes live on the new trading platform out of FNO band. Okay, all right. Thank you so much, guys, for joining us and prepping us up for this trading day ahead. Uh, time for a short break now. When we return, IT Bellwether TCS reported the second quarter earnings last evening. We'll get you more details and analysis on the other side.